Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day three of the Air Navigation Conference and day two of Committee A's deliberations. I trust that everyone had a good evening and that we're all ready to continue our discussions in the same manner that we did yesterday. As a short summary, we addressed yesterday agenda item one. On our work schedule, we had committed yesterday and today to address the sub-items under agenda item one. These items are 1.1, the vision and overview of the sixth edition of the Global Air Navigation Plan, 1.2, air navigation performance improvement and measurement through the aviation system block upgrade and basic building blocks framework, 1.3, air navigation roadmaps, and 1.4, air navigation business cases. Despite many discussions and input from the states, we still were able to get through the discussions on agenda item one. As such, through the permission of the committee, we started discussion on agenda item two. And yesterday we did address agenda item, sub item 2.1, aerodrome operations and capacity. Whilst we will continue to uh, encourage discussion and that we have ordered the business so that you would be here and be available to do the discussions. We do want to take advantage of any time that we have been able to gain. As such, we are asking that you be prepared to um, address agenda item three, should we complete agenda item two, to address agenda item three today, this afternoon. In uh, looking at um, our structure and order yesterday, one difference we will have today, uh, yesterday in presenting the papers, we would have presented the conclusions from the Secretariat papers. Uh, going forward, we would in fact do, uh, have the Secretariat present the papers giving a background along with the conclusions. As we think by providing that general overview to the committee, it would help us to facilitate the discussions we want to have. As a reminder, the purpose of this conference is for us as the global community to determine what are the things we need to do, what are the things we need to advise IKEA to do, so that, that they can then go forward, look at those items and discuss how those things shall be done, how resources shall be provided to each of those items. Is there any comment from the Secretariat? Okay, thank you. So. Uh, we would want to move into discussion of agenda item 2.2, the integrated CNS and spectrum strategy. Under this agenda item 2.2, we will discuss an integrated CNS and spectrum strategy. The evolution and rationalization of the global CNS infrastructure, which takes into account the impact on the air navigation system as a whole and the increasing pressures on aeronautical frequency spectrum. We have 11 working papers and 10 information papers. To facilitate the discussion, we have grouped these working papers into two batches. Batch one will address in general terms the long-term evolution of the CNS system and frequency spectrum access. Batch two papers deal specifically with the evolution of the global navigation satellite system. Under batch two, batch one, sorry, for 2.2, we would look specifically at working papers number 20, 37, and 113, and information papers 198, 244, 247, and 251. I would now ask the Secretary to present uh, working paper 20. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Working paper 20 is not about systems or services described in the Global Air Navigation Plan. This paper is not really about frequency spectrum defense either, as described in Assembly Resolution 838-6. This paper is not about the current CNS systems either. 
They continue to serve aviation well. Some of them have done so for a very long time while getting incremental capability upgrades every now and then, as reflected through our SARPs. The intent of the paper is to highlight that Spectrum is a limited resource and that other telecommunication technologies are being evolved at a much faster pace than within aviation to get as efficient use of the resource as possible. Uh, without a doubt, the current C, N and S systems and standards will continue to evolve to accommodate the air navigation system for the next 20 years or more. However, also without a doubt, due to the increasing congestion of the frequency spectrum resource and the corresponding increasing need to use it as efficiently as possible, unless aviation, unless we, start uh, already to work on an updated methodology to develop the new generations of our CNS systems, aviation as an industry may find that substantial portions of the aeronautical spectrum will be put to more efficient use by the spectrum regulators. Aviation may be forced to become just another user of mobile telecom services where system availabilities and integrity will be orders of magnitude lower than what we expect and require from our systems today. Hence, the twofold recommendation at the end of the paper. The uh, main element being that we need to launch a study to come up with a potential plan or a blueprint on how to best evolve the CN and S functions and spectrum strategy in the long term. And the second element, uh, which is a more traditional one, reminding states that aviation authorities, they need to engage in the spectrum regulatory process. Thank you, that concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you, from the Secretariat. We'll now move to working paper number 37, presented on behalf of the European Union and its member states, other member states of the European Civil Aviation Conference and by Eurocontrol, and it will be presented by the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm pleased to present Working Paper 37 on behalf of the 44 ECAC states, the European Union and Eurocontrol. Working Paper 37 advocates a shift towards addressing CNS in an integrated manner using an ICAO CNS and radio spectrum cross-domain team of experts within the performance-based framework. This team of experts would focus on the capabilities across the CNS domains towards ensuring key operational concepts such as TBO, whilst maintaining and enhancing safety and security performance, as referred to in Europe, Europe's uh, Working Paper 38 that will be presented under agenda, uh, agenda Item 32. It's important to point out the need to approach this in an evolutionary path towards the implementation of CNS services. In this context, an integrated CNS and radio spectrum strategy will also facilitate and strengthen the necessary collaboration between civil and military communities towards an increased level of interoperability and harmonization uh, to be discussed under agenda item 34 with working papers 39 and 49 and others pointing in that direction. At the same time, it will facilitate a faster integration of new entrants into aviation, such as unmanned aerial systems, uh, urban air mobility, and suborbital operations, and so forth, which will be discussed under uh, agenda item five and reflected in working papers 41, 46, and 51. Working paper 37 advocates that this strategic path should be ensured through an efficient, and effective ICAO facilitated global collaboration with states and regional modernization programs from the research and development phase to the deployment of interoperable systems. In line with the no country left behind principle, it is important to mention that the realization of this change has the potential to bring performance improvements for all operational environments, irrespective of traffic density and complexity. This will bring benefit to all aviation stakeholders whilst allowing the delivery of performance-based and cost-effective services derived from both the current and the future infrastructures and systems supporting the expected traffic growth. 
Furthermore, as we include radio spectrum in an integrated CNS uh, and spectrum or CNSS strategy, it will allow for the development of a proactive global aviation radio spectrum strategy aligned with performance needs. <coughs> this should ensure a safe and efficient use and long-term availability of adequate radio spectrum embracing new opportunities in line with the needs of the Global Air Navigation Plan and uh, aviation system block upgrades. With this, Mr. Chairman, the conference is invited to agree to the recommendations as stated in paragraph five of working paper 37. Thank you. Uh, thank you, United Kingdom. We now move to working paper 113 to be presented by Canada. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Canada is pleased to present paper, working paper 113. Frequency spectrum is, li is a limited resource. Aviation as a global industry requires access to interference-free spectrum, which is operationally critical for safe and efficiency air transport. This paper highlights the concerns of the aviation industry regarding the ever-increasing pressure from non-aeronautical frequency spectrum users seeking to share aeronautical frequency bands. Aviation cannot be compared to any other commercial non-aeronautical frequency spectrum user in respect to availability of a spectrum, particularly protected spectrum that has special recognition under the International Telecommunication Union radio regulation. Within the last 30 years, the air transport industry has benefited from enhancements to communications, navigation, and surveillance service availability via satellite. Technological advancements in CNS services via satellite have supported continued annual growth rates in the aviation industry with increased safety and efficiency gain in airspace management. One such ICAO initiative Performance-based communication and surveillance is being implemented to optimize reduce vertical separation minima, minimum airspace. It is important to note that achieving efficiency in airspace management to support the ever-increasing air transport flow capacity in continental, continental and oceanic airspace also has a direct impact on air traffic management at airports. The frequency bands used by navigation, surveillance, and communication systems in the airport terminal environment have a critical requirement to be interference-free with 100% availability and use only by aeronautical systems. Aviation cannot afford to have this diminished access to protected spectrum. The potential effect would be significant and may constrain the expected continued annual growth rate in the global air transport industry. Safety and efficiency are of paramount importance in the aviation industry. Frequency spectrum access cannot be compromised by impediment of force sharing with non-aeronautical users. Equally important is the requirement to ensure effective implementation of a safety oversight program in accordance with IKO state obligations to ensure that aviation remain aware of the consequences of diminished access to protected frequency spectrum. Therefore, the conference is invited to urge states to actively engage in spectrum regulatory process to ensure the protection of the safety critical operations of aeronautical communication, navigation, and surveillance system by Assembly Resolution 838-6 and also to urge states to ensure through the implementation of their safety oversight program that the designated competency authority, the CAA and the air navigation service providers are involved in safety case assessments of the radio frequency environment in such a manner to adequately protect the operational availability of aeronautical, aeronautical uh, CNS systems. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Colonel. Uh, before opening the floor for discussion, uh, allow the Secretariat the opportunity to provide any clarifications. No clarifications. Okay, thank you. So the floor is open for discussions. Uh, Finland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Finland supports the working paper 20 presented by Secretariat. Working paper 37 presented by United Kingdom as well as the working paper 113 by Canada on the active engagement on the aviation protected spectrum to ensure the protection of the safety critical operation of aeronautical communications, navigation and surveillance systems. While I have the floor, I would like to highlight the importance of developing the integrated CNS and spectrum strategy as we should ensure medium and long-term availability of radio spectrum for the needs of fast evolving aviation sector with new opportunities. Finland also warmly welcomes the notion of the performance-based and service-oriented CNS framework to enable the new business models for CNS service provision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Finland. United States. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The United States supports working paper 37 uh, to achieve an integrated CNS and spectrum strategy and the establishment of a multidisciplinary group of global experts uh, from the states and regional modernization programs. Also, we acknowledge the ongoing coordination with the ITU regarding suborbital operations and look forward to the results of that coordination. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brazil? Morning. Seguro que las bandas de. Certainly, uh, aeronautical frequency bands uh, are under increasing pressure from other services, so it's very important to have good planning over the long term to prevent uh, diminishment of uh, safety services and critical uh, services. Non aeronautical use uh, of uh, the bands could degrade CNS services, and so Brazil strongly supports the recommendations 20, uh, 36, and 37. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, Singapore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Singapore supports paper 20. Singapore shares IQ's view that frequency spectrum is a limited resource. Specifically, on spectrum management, Singapore would like to highlight that new aviation applications on frequency use are emerging and the current spectrum regulatory process has to be made more flexible to accommodate future innovations in a speedy manner. One good example is the extension of the use of 1090 MHz for reception of space-based ADSB, which was done through ITU WRC, which is held only once every four years. Singapore has initiated a study for the development of a space-based VHF to enable enhanced communications over remote and oceanic airspaces to enhance safety and efficiency of aircraft operations. However, even though the VHF frequency has been designated for aviation use, the regulatory approval has to be from ITU WRC. To enable quicker innovations in aviation spectrum use, IQ should have an arrangement with ITU for a more flexible process <laughs> for regulatory oversight of aviation frequency use. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cameroon. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Good morning to all. Cameroon supports the working paper 20 presented by Secretariat, recognizing that uh, there does need to be a new long-term strategic plan to improve the use of uh, frequencies and optimize uh, aeronautical frequency bands. With regard to working paper 37, presented by the UK, uh, we uh, recognize that uh, there can be harmful interference and uh, CNS uh, has to be robust and uh, we need to protect for vulnerabilities and so we fully support the recommendations in that working paper. Cameroon would also like to support a working paper 113 by Canada in recognition of the need for uh, regulation of frequency bands uh, allocated to civil aviation. 
so that states can uh, protect uh, the bands from harmful interference, which could occur if uh, unauthorized users are using the frequency bands. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Oman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Oman would like to support Working Paper 113 presented by Canada and Working Paper 20 presented by the Secretariat. In particular, point B, where states are requested to, in to engage in the spectrum regulatory process. As we all know, lobbying in these areas is highly encouraged uh, to get passed through. Uh, Oman would also like to support uh, working paper number 37 presented by Austria, especially point B again, of, on the recommendation, uh, of the recommendation, although we understand that it will be a challenging task, but we also know that uh, the options are very limited. Thank you very much. Thank you. South Africa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, South Africa will also like to support working paper 20. Uh, we, we believe that launching of a study on this matter uh, is the way to go. The study should also consider mechanism which could protect the aviation frequency spectrum allocation to alleviate pressures which causes infringement on the allocation of the spectrum. Uh, we also like to support working paper 37 and especially a call to request ICAO to develop and maintain a proactive global aviation radio spectrum strategy, which we believe that could assist states to mitigate issues that they are faced with. Uh, South Africa also like to support working paper 113 uh, with all its recommendations. Thank you very much. Chair. Thank you, uh, United Arab Emirates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we would like to uh, support Working Paper 37 and appreciate the information contained in uh, information papers 198, 244, 247, 251, presented by China and Japan. Uh, with regards to Working Paper 20 and uh, 113, um, we also support the Working Papers with the following notes as far Working Paper 20. The example in 4.2.1 may contribute to a single point of failure and degradation. While systems need to evolve and alternate measures need to be found to ease the pressure on the allocated spectrum, the current aviation spectrum needs to be safeguarded as losing allocated spectrum will have an adverse impact on aviation services. Reporting of areas of radio interference, especially to airline users, to allow them to switch to different frequencies before time or find mitigations. CNS interference monitoring teams could be set up to assist local regulatory authorities, enhancing the global frequency spectrum database and ensuring the updated database are available on frequency finders as well as look at ways of effectively reusing the frequency spectrum, similar to what is done in the cellular industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ayata. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. International Air Transport Association appreciate the need and we support the visions for proactive long-term strategies for aviation spectrum and CNS. We believe that the complete performance-based CNS integrated framework, taking into account all the elements of communication, navigation, and surveillance, can technically serve as a foundation for efficient utilization of limited spectrum resource. We also believe that the strategy, once designed and implemented appropriately, will result in various operational benefit. This strategy, Mr. Chairman, should serve as a systematic roadmap toward global harmonizations. The time frame of the strategy need to be sufficiently long to allow meaningful changes to take place, noting that the aviation equipment life cycle and complex certifications and implementation process. And we need to ensure that a proper transition is take place so that uh, all the stakeholders can maintain their commitment to the process. Regarding recommendations in working paper 113, 
IATA and Corus there to take into account operational and technical input from aircraft operators and airspace users prior to making decisions on frequency spectrum. We have also urge IKO panels to continue its good work in enhancing IKO soft and USO protocol questions in order to strengthen the effectiveness of the USO process with regard to the spectrum management. Lastly, as the development of the performance-based CNS integrated strategy will require a collaborative, multidisciplinary approach and active support from all the recognized experts in various technical domains. IATA encourage appropriate resource and commitment to be put behind this very important IQO initiative and development. We also urge the effort to always include meaningful consultations and collaborative decision-making process. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, China? I thank you, Mr. Chair. The Chinese delegation supports the uh, WP20 so submitted by the Secretariat and uh, the WP30 uh, uh, provided by EU and uh, Euro control and uh, the uh, uh, European Civil Aviation Conference and for the following reasons. As the modern technologies are evolving constantly, the boundaries among different types of CNS technologies are blurring and uh, there will be an increased uh, interaction among air infrastructure, ground infrastructure and airborne e equipment. In addition, with the emergence of new entrants such as suborbital aircraft, UAVs, uh, the ICAO and uh, all regions and the countries should, as per the established objectives set out in the GAMP, uh, explore uh, jointly and come up with a path for the development and implementation of a future oriented, uh, proactive, integrated CNS technologies as to address challenges facing future integrated air navigation systems. In, we would like to propose that in developing and maintaining the global navigation radio frequency strategy, we should uh, establish a regular coordinating mechanism with the ITU to uh, ensure the uh, smooth implementation of relevant activities. Thank you. Thank you, China. Australia? Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. Um, Australia supports uh, Working Paper 20, and I think it's an excellent idea. Working Paper 37 we also support. Um, however, in true Australian drafting fashion, we suggest it reads a bit like a speech. Uh, and can I suggest that we might put forward some amendments just to shorten it a little bit? And I'm sure we'll still have the same effect for my European colleagues. So. For example, there's a reference there to single European sky. My understanding is ICAO doesn't normally refer recommendations about particular systems and a global reach, so might have a bit of a suggestion there. And similarly, support the Canadian Paper 113, except the wording as currently drafted talks about this being achieved through the implementation of the safety oversight program. That would not be how Australia would implement that recommendation. So may I suggest that it can be fairly easily uh, fixed by saying urge states to ensure aviation safety agencies are involved in a safety case assessment and take out the bit in between. Uh, but happy to pass those suggestions on. But uh, three excellent papers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Australia. Uh, India? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we support uh, the working paper 113 presented by Canada. The frequency spectrum access cannot be compromised to be shared with non-aeronautical users. Further, it is uh, important to ensure implementation of safety oversight program more effectively in accordance with ICAO state obligations to facilitate protection of aviation frequency spectrum. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to you all. Kenso supports and welcomes the working papers 20, 37, and 113. It is very important to protect the safe use of aeronautical frequency spectrum. Availability of safe aeronautical CNS systems is essential, and Kenso is ready to support ICAO in the work and study as proposed in working paper 20. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Thailand. Thailand like to support the working paper 20. 
presented by the Secretariat, and also working paper 113 presented by Canada. On the conclusion item 3.2a, the state to actively engage in spectrum regulatory process. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mali also supports working paper 20, 37, and 113, which demonstrate the need for the protection of the frequencies against interference. We have two recommendations. Uh, the recommendation of working paper 20, presented by the Secretariat, and the recommendation in uh, working paper 113, presented by Canada, Canada a small de detail the, uh, regarding the uh, commitment of the states to, to be involved. To merge these. Thank you, uh, Republic of Korea. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Republic of Korea agrees uh, working paper 37, uh, presented by United Kingdom, on behalf of uh, EU, ECAG, and Eurocultural, uh, requesting our uh, ICAO to develop and maintain uh, the integrated, isolated, and CNS and long term radio spectrum strategy and to develop uh, provisions for supporting civil, military, interoperability, and uh, synergies. Thank you. Thank you, Mexico. Gracias. Thank you, Chairman. It's not the first time that we're talking about uh, protection for the aeronautical frequency spectrum, I believe, in uh, each uh, ITU meeting, ICAO plays a very active role and urges uh, states uh, at uh, that event to also do their bit to ensure that aeronautical frequencies are protected. The three papers have similar intentions, so we can certainly support them all. But I would like to refer to Working Paper 20 by Secretariat. And uh, we fully support action item A, but as a result of this study, perhaps in action item B, we could uh, consider the possibility, and I'm sure there will be a possibility, to ask uh, states to collaborate not just in this respect, because uh, we're talking about necessary protection, but also states should be uh, uh, participating in ITU conferences in such a way that we can ensure the protection of aeronautical frequencies. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Afka. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. AFCAC would like to support Working Paper 20 by the Secretariat and would like to highlight the avant-garde role that ICAO must, pay, must play in protecting frequencies for aviation. Therefore, AFCAC would like to insist on the ICAO state letter, and this letter should remain consistent because it's important for there to be consultations at the regional and national level. We would also like to recommend that ICAO continues to strengthen its cooperation with the ITU to protect the frequency spectrum for aviation. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Indonesia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. We welcome and support the proposed recommendation by the Secretary in the working paper number 20 and working paper 113. Uh, by consider, firstly, the spectrum of frequency are limited. The second one, the frequency protection 
is the, from any interference is the the main object that main that have effect directly to the aviation safety. The 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 last one one of the one thing that we are highlight is, I believe that that each country should have a strong commitment and strong internal coordination to protect the frequency for aviation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Austria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as it has been widely expressed that uh, the spectrum protection and the very efficient use of the spectrum if, is of utmost importance. I do not want to prolong on that. I just would like to draw the attention of uh, the conference to the fact that uh, there was a statement by Steve Creamer the other day who said, uh, we do not have a problem with technology, we have it with administration. And as such, I would uh, draw your attention on the opportunities that gives uh, uh, this technology transfer to facilitate the faster integration uh, of new entrants like UAS or other, or other new, new entrants into the system. And we'd like to support it for that reason. Working paper 37, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Colombia. Thank you, Chairman. We thank Secretariat and uh, the states for presenting these three working papers, and we support uh, the recommendations proposed. We agree with the United Arab Emirates about the need for monitoring of uh, aeronautical frequency interference and the need for ongoing work to optimize the limited resource uh, that is the spectrum. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, United States, you may wish to comment again. Uh, no. Uh, no. Uh, is there any other state wishing to comment? Or organization. You see Cameroon again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's just that in my first intervention, I forgot to underscore to the committee the need to recommend to ICAO to do everything it can in its uh, cooperation with the ITU to ensure that uh, the, um, the, they will be bringing this issue to the representatives in the respective states as well. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. If there are no other comments, we can move to the second batch of working papers. So the second batch will deal with the evolution of the global navigation satellite system. The working papers in this batch are working papers 15, 111, 150, 153, 167, 190, and 283. I'll now invite the Secretary to present Working Paper 15. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, working Paper 15 uh, discusses the evolution of the Global Navigation Satellite System, GNSS, towards the introduction of Dual Frequency Multi-Constellation, or DFMC, um, GNSS. Section 2.1 of the paper reviews the current use of GNSS by civil aviation, which is predominantly, although not exclusively, based on a single frequency of a single GNSS constellation, and provides the foundation for the global implementation of performance-based navigation, PBN, and uh, automatic dependent surveillance, um, ADS, and for many other aircraft applications that require position or time information. Section 2.2 .2 
uh, give some information on the ongoing evolution on, of the various GNSS elements uh, towards uh, the FMC. And uh, section three summarizes the related standardization work, both in ICAO and in avionics industry bodies. In section four, uh, we present uh, the benefits deriving from the introduction of the FMC GNSS. Uh, to summarize, they include improved uh, robustness and navigation performance, uh, mitigating vulnerability to interference and ionospheric disturbance. These technical improvements will enable operational benefits in terms of safety and efficiency. Uh, section 2.5 highlights the long-term goal of the introduction of DFMC. GNSS, by its own nature, is a seamless global system that broadcasts uh, signals that can be received independently of airspace boundaries. Therefore, a desirable long-term goal is that all states be able to accept for lateral navigation using their airspace all GNSS elements standardized by ICAO. Aircraft could then independently select suitable combinations uh, of GNSS elements uh, subject only to compliance with the applicable SARPs and PBN specifications rather than dependent on airspace boundaries. Uh, section 2.6 uh, deals with the challenges that will have to be faced before the long-term goal I, I just uh, described can be achieved. In particular, the challenges are related to the process of acceptance of GNSS elements by states that can be complex and may delay the use of GNSS elements in a given airspace or lead to restrictions on their use. Section 2.7 and 2.8 propose a way forward uh, based on actions by ICAO and by states that are actually uh, fully reflected in the draft recommendation that I will introduce now. So I I'm not going to repeat that. In, uh, in summary, uh, the FNC GNSS can improve performance and robustness for all CNS applications that make use of GNSS. Uh, I've described the desirable long-term goal. There are challenges in the medium term to address individual states' requirements for the use of specific GNSS elements while limiting the complexity of the FMC equipment and ensuring backwards compatibility for existing equipment. The recommendation we are offering in Working Paper 15 as three, the first three elements uh, are addressed to ICAO uh, and um, uh, request ICAO to continue development of SARPs and um, appropriate provisions and guidance materials to fulfill the um, expectations uh, we have from the FMC GNSS. Uh, the last three um, Elements of the recommendations are addressed to states. We urge them to take advantage of the improved uh, robustness and performance offered by the FMC um, to avoid prohibiting the use of GNSS elements that are compliant with ICAO SARPs, to carefully consider and assess if mandates for equipage or use of any particular GNSS element are necessary or appropriate, and finally, to ensure implementation of ICAO provisions for publication to inf of information related to the use of GNSS element in the aeronautical information publications. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs> Thank you. We now move to presentation of working paper 111 by the IAC. Do you hear me? Uh, no. 
Спасибо. Thank you. Good morning. This paper presents information on the large project which is being carried out in the countries of the agreement on aviation and the use of airspace in the CIS states and specifically it talks about the development of the uh, stations f for ground-based augmentation relating to um, GBAS. In this project, so far, the de deployment of over 100 GBAS stations at various levels have been insured, and they have different uh, characteristics. These stations are already being used, for example, to monitor the performance of GNSS, including uh, those of GLONASS and GPS, which currently meet the ICAO standards. And they are also uh, being used for preci precision landing approaches, instrument approaches. This is airborne equipment, which, uh, like the ground-based stations, use the systems from both si signals from both systems, GLONASS and GPS. Again, I would like to underscore that these stations provide different levels of performance. Uh, starting from uh, operations near the aerodrome, approach, and landing uh, categories for vertical landing and APV. In conjunction with this state of deployment, we would like you to, to draw your attention to the fact that we would like ICAO to in, intensify its work <clears throat> on the procedures for the use of these systems. And not only for <clears throat> landing approaches, but also for operations near the airport. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Before moving to the next papers, so this working paper 111 by the Interstate Aviation Committee, can I have a show of support from the states for this paper to be discussed? Uh, thank you. I now request the Russian Federation to present working papers 150 and 153. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Working Paper 150 talks about that the GADS system provides for uh, when there's the necessity to uh, create a link uh, in indicating distress. The existing documents, control documents, for GLONASS and Galileo make it possible to work on L1 in a, the relevant uh, megahertz band. And the structure that is available, there is potential for these uh, satellites to be used to send the uh, necessary messages. In order to ensure that this process will be automat automatic uh, and that there will be communication with Galileo and GLONASS, 
there are various means. Russian Federation has second generation systems that work together with other systems. It would be useful to add to the GADS concept to include a space to earth return link. And so that the uh, they could send messages that confirm the reception of a distress signal from an aircraft. And this would be useful for being used in different systems. We pr pr propose to recommend to ICAO to consider the possibility of enhancing the GADS concept of operations with a communication channel intended to transmit a search and rescue center message that confirms the reception of a distress signal from an aircraft, as well as other messages and commands addressed to the ELT, and recommend to ICAO under the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 agenda item on the GADS to support the inclusion in the radio regulations of provisions allowing the use of signals from the radio navigation satellite surfaces space to Earth to transmit messages confirming reception of a distress signal from an aircraft, as well as other messages and commands addressed to the ELT. Thank you. Uh, we have com finished presenting working paper 150. May I go on to the next paper? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> this paper, it, 153, is called The Current Status and Ev Evolution of the GLONASS Constellation in Support of a Multi-System GNSS. When we looked at this issue uh, with the GLONASS and GNSS uh, systems in the <clears throat> 2012 ANC conference, we saw that this is uh, being provided to the international community <clears throat> free of direct user fees. But it was recommended, it was recognized that the GNSS is a global utility which is very useful. And this wor working paper discusses the use of several major constellations that transmit signals using MFMC. However, this does not preclude solutions based on initially using several constellations in two frequency bands, DFMC, and one constellation broadcasting in two frequency bands, DFSC, or a single frequency signal from several major constellations, SFMC. Over the past few years, the GLONASS constellation has been maintained at a nominal population of 24 satellites and has been significantly upgraded. As of the 24th of June, 2018, the GLONASS system was made up of 24 satellites used for this uh, purpose. And 23 are second generation space vehicles, GLONASS M, and one is third generation, GLONASS K. Further GLONASS vehicles will be launched as required. This system is r routinely evaluated, and the results are provided to ICAO to confirm that it co complies with the ICAO standards and recommended practices. GLONASS is a self-contained navigation system that complies with the ICAO SARPs. GLONASS is frequently used by Russian civil aviation in conjunction with the GPS system through the use of combined GLONASS GPS receivers developed by Russian industry. And currently, more than 600 Russian aircraft are equipped with airborne GLONASS uh, GPS systems. Uh, experience using these navigation receivers has demonstrated improvements in readiness, continu continuity of service, and integrity, and particularly where there is interference that could hindle, hinder stable reception of the GLONASS and or GPS navigation signals. In 2017, RTCA completed the development and publication of the MOPS for uh, operational performance standards for GPS GLONASS, uh, L1 only airborne equipment. And this uh, opens up the possibility of using the dual system navigation solution on aircraft from foreign manufacturers. The concept of an MFMC GNSS envisages the use of signals with CDMA as a basis for effective interoperability and compatibility of the constellations and signals that make it up. 
So the plan is for all satellites of GLONASS constellation to broadcast the CDMA signal on the L3 frequency by 2021 and the FDMA signal on the L1 and L2 frequencies. The interface control documents for GLONASS signals with code division were approved in 2016. And then they were used as a basis for preparing and subsequently validating changes to the SARPs, SARPs for GLONASS CDMA signals. In uh, the possibilities of uh, the U.S. using GPS and also the <clears throat> Beidou system from China and the Russian possibilities um, mean that there will be the dual signals. And so... Uh, GBAS could also be used, and so we need coordination with all of these relevant organizations to develop standards in accordance with the principles and approaches laid out in the recently published DFMC GNSS concept of operations. Uh, I'll go on to the conclusions. The Air Navigation Conference is invited to support Recommendation 2.2X presented in Working Paper 15. And we believe that it, it would be advisable for to develop industry standards and the appropriate aviation equipment capable of processing CDMA signals from all constellations and make the decision to select the most effective combinations of constellations based on performance and safety. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Now move to working paper 167 uh, and be present, to be presented on behalf of the International Coordinating Council of Aerospace Industries Association and IATA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. ICCAIA and IATA present this working paper to bring forward the collective concerns from the industry on the issue of GNSS mandates. The objective of this paper is to ensure that states are well informed about potential undesirable consequences of GNSS mandates and the potential consequences of prohibition of the use of some GNSS elements in some airspace. The paper urges states to commit and deliver in a timely manner the long-term expectations as outlined in the NSP CONOPS, in which every state recognizes and authorizes the use of all GNSS elements that are performing in a compliance with ICAO SARPs for the intended operations. This positive environment will help limit the fragmentation of satellite navigation services and capabilities and will ease the adoption and impl implementation of dual frequency multi-constellation GNSS. The conference is invited to agree with the following recommendations. Uh, the implementation of GNSS according to the PBN concept uh, that states would commit and deliver in a timely manner the long-term expectations in the, in the NSP CONOPS in which every state recognizes and authorizes the use of all GNSS elements, thus creating a positive environment for DFMC GNSS. States also commit to the principle that any requirements on position, navigation, and timing should be performance-based and driven by operational needs, not specific technology solutions. That states abstain from mandating equipage or use any particular or use of any particular GNSS core constellation or augmentation system, that states refrain from precluding the use of any GNSS elements available if they perform according to the ICAO SARPs and can meet all safety requirements for the intended operations, and finally, to encourage the further development to deliver incremental operation, operational benefits from DFMC GNSS. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Now ask uh, Uganda to present working paper 190 on behalf of the East African community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the East African community is uh, the regional economic community comprising of six states, of Burundi, Kenya, South Sudan, uh, Tanzania, and Uganda. And in collaboration with the other uh, uh, regional economic communities, namely the the International Authority of Development, IGAD, and, Com and COMESA, the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, are considering implementation of a global navigation system, the GNSS monitoring module, 
over the Eastern Africa region. Uh, the, the paper presents uh, an overview <coughs> of the planned uh, GNSS monitoring system for, the, for this sub-region. Uh, 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 just notice that this, uh, uh, whereas the other sub-regions of Africa have a GNSS, have implemented a GNSS monitoring system, the East African uh, states, 12 of them which are depicted in, in the uh, attachment, do not have such a module. The system shall facilitate the states in implementation of GNSS monitoring and data recording uh, that will uh, underline the stakeholders' responsibilities towards mitigation of GNSS vulnerabilities and operational challenges. It shall be a useful tool in raising the awareness and building uh, necessary capacity in GNSS processing, performance, performance measurement, monitoring and analysis. Implementation of uh, imp the possible implementation modalities will depend on the availability of funds for the for the program, and shall be undertaken on a phased manner. Uh, currently, uh, co cooperation is required for funds to be mobilised. Uh, there are various opportunities that have uh, th that exists. One of them is the Africa. European Union strategic partnership towards improving aviation safety in Africa. The other is the creation of an inter-economic uh, community uh, framework uh, regionally within East Africa, IGAD and COMESA for this effort. The other opportunities include cooperation with other, other international institutions such as ICAO, the UN Economic Com uh, Commission and financial institutions including banks. Now, the conference is uh, invited to uh, a, take note of the current initiative of establishing the GNSS monitoring system in the sub-region. Uh, number two, uh, request the ICAO states and other international organizations to consider and partner in mobilization of funds to support implementation of this GNSS monitoring system and module in the East African region. Thank you. Thank you. And we now ask Senegal to present uh, working paper 283 on behalf of ASECNA. Uh, <coughs> Merci, Thank you, Chairman. ASECNA is an international public organization made up of 18 member states, uh, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Comoros, uh, Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Equatorial Guinea, Madagascar, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Togo, uh, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. We provide uh, air navigation services over 60 million square miles and uh, help to manage uh, continental and uh, oceanic airspace, airspace uh, conferred by the international community and African states. This working paper presents uh, the status of uh, the ASECNA SBAS program, which uh, intends to uh, provide services uh, beyond 2028 20, to 2030 and uh, According to uh, RTCA and Uruguay, Uruguay uh, MOPS uh, for airspace uh, over our uh, states for the benefits of uh, airspace users. The dual frequency multi constellation uh, SBAS service uh, uh, is expected to be on 2028 20, 2030. 20, As Agnes View, is that uh, use of uh, DFMC SBAS and uh, related services uh, should be limited to SBAS uh, elements that are approved and uh, promulgated in the AIP. Solutions uh, are to be further investigated to ensure that avionics uh, only use SBAS uh, elements accepted by states for navigation services. This uh, proposal should be uh, duly considered. 
paragraph 2.1 of the working paper states that SBAS does not require the installation and ma maintenance of local ground-based uh, navigation aids or landing systems and the provision of related staff. And so SBAS is particularly well suited to the African in operational environment where remote and isolated regions are vast and numerous. The benefits of introduction are expected to be much greater than in other parts of the world. Looking at paragraph 2.2, SBAS uh, in the SECNET airspace is intended to enhance uh, PBN and ADSB operations for all flight phases uh, from en route uh, to approach and thus uh, significantly enhance uh, flight safety and efficiency. SBAS uh, services will uh, improve uh, availability of routes and uh, optimize uh, existing routes and uh, it will provide an effective solution for Cat 1 equivalent operations everywhere, every time, especially in the very large uh, number of uh, runway ends in international, regional, and domestic airports, which do not have precision approaches at this time. It will also enable uh, service continuity during instrument landing system maintenance and renewal periods and will help overcome the known safety and operational performance limitations of LNAV and VNAV. Moving to paragraph 2.3 in the paper, a signal in space will be compliant with the corresponding SARPs from ICAO, Annex 10, uh, minimal operational performance standards uh, published by EuroK and uh, the agency member states' regulations uh, according to required certification. Paragraph 2.4, the service uh, provision strategy is intended to meet user needs with an incremental approach uh, in terms of uh, coverage and performance, considering uh, uh, the move toward the next generation of DFMC. The plan is to uh, autonomously provide airspace users with L1 early services starting in 2021 and 2022, and to provide DFMC services uh, after 2028-2030. Paragraph 211, while acknowledging the desirable long-term goal to ensure that all GNSS elements are compliant with the SARPs and have been accepted by ICAO can be used in all states for lateral navigation to facilitate interoperability, improve safety and increase effectiveness and ability of states to commission GNSS services in respect of their mandates and obligation and thereby control the use of GNSS elements in their airspace should be considered. The process uh, for acceptance of GNSS elements by states can be complex and uh, run into hurdles and states' requirements for the use of GNSS elements should be properly addressed. In this respect, as far as SBAS is concerned, the following concept of operations should be considered. A. When only specific SBAS elements are accepted for use, DFMC avionics should only use those SBAS elements that have been accepted by the state managing the airspace where the aircraft is flying. B. When all SBAS elements are accepted for operations or there is no state declaration of acceptance of an SBAS element, then DFMC avionics should select for lateral navigation, uh, the SBAS elements to be uh, used subject to compliance with SARPs, uh, PBN uh, specifications, and airworth airworthiness, airworthiness approvals. Industry and uh, states, uh, ICAO, EuroK, and RTCA should work together to ensure that uh, avionics only use DFMC SBAS elements accepted by states for navigation purposes. In conclusion, the conference is invited to consider the implementation status of the ASECNA SBAS program and the need to further investigate, develop, and implement solutions to ensure that uh, avionics only use the DFMC SBAS elements accepted by states for navigation. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senegal. So that concludes uh, batch two of the uh, working papers. I would like to invite the Secretary to provide any clarification on these working papers before opening the floor for discussion.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Secretariat has a few points to make for this agenda item. First off, uh, working paper 111 and working paper 283 make specific proposals for amendments to ICAO provisions or for specific technical development work. The approach that we normally follow in this case with such proposals would be to refer them to the relevant ICAO expert groups for consideration without entering into a detailed discussion this committee. Working paper 190 requests a joint funds mobilization to support implementation of a GNSS monitoring system in Eastern African community. And in this regard, it should be noted that this conference in its capacity as a technical entity is not in a position to make funding decisions. Instead, the Secretariat will bring the request to the uh, attention of ICAO Council for its consideration. With regard to working paper 150, the Secretariat has clarification on both bullet A and bullet B of the recommendation. With regard to bullet A of the recommendation in this working paper, we wish to uh, bring to the attention of the committee that um, the gas CONOPS version 6 includes the possibility for an ADT function to be activated by the ground, that is the operator. This functionality was circulated to states in the proposed Amendment 40 to Annex 6 Part 1 and was unfortunately not supported by states. With regard to Bullet B, the proposal to bring the matter to the consideration of an ITU World Radio Communication Conference was informally reviewed by a relevant expert group of ICAO. And in that meeting, uh, it was observed that the proposal would require an addition of a mobile satellite service allocation into this GNSS bands, which was seen as risky to GNSS. As such, the meeting agreed that aviation should not be an active proponent of the actions proposed in this working paper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Secretary. Uh, with uh, the clarifications provided by the Secretary from the working papers, I would like to open discussions on uh, the papers presented. Of Slovenia. Uh, good morning, everybody. Slovenia supports the working paper 15 presented by Secretariat and also its uh, recommendations. Slovenia would like to thank ICAO for the development of the CONOPS for GNSS dual frequency multi constellation services that is considered very useful guiding material on GNSS. Nevertheless, with regard to recommendation E, we acknowledge that there are concerns about the unrestricted use of the various GNSS signals. Therefore, we would like to recommend a further assessment of legal and technical aspects of GNSS signal and the related regulatory framework in order to address those. There is also a need to develop guidance material to facilitate acceptance of various GNSS elements by states addressing related issues such as service provision, regulatory compliance, spectrum protection, GNSS monitoring, legal aspects, etc. The desirable long-term goal is that all GNSS elements that are compliant with the SARPs and have been already accepted by the ICAO can be used in all states for lateral navigation and the GNSS elements used for approaches with vertical guidance will continue to be specified by the states. The achievement of this goal is a collective effort involving all states, ICAO and the GNSS elements service providers. Slovenia would like to propose adding this goal in the final report of the conference as the main driver for all the recommendations. We would like to highlight that there are concerns about failing to adequately consider the potential vulnerabilities of GNSS. There is a need, there is a need uh, 
to prove that GNSS can meet the combined availability, reliability, and continuity requirements of those systems within which it's used or where it is used. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to all. Uh, Saudi Arabia support working paper 15 presented by the Sec Secretariat and would like to propose that the new IKU provisions associated with the notification of event affecting Genesis service should allow easy and timely access of this information for better use and planning. Therefore, the text of Polit B of the recommendation may be amended considering this proposal. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Brazil? Gracias. Thank you, Chairman. Brazil supports uh, papers 15 and uh, 767 with regard to uh, GNSS uh, ele elements and DMFC. In particular, use of multi-constellations will uh, help uh, mitigate uh, ionospheric effects on signals, in particular in South America and Brazil. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brazil. Uh, Germany? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to refer to uh, WP111. Um, the paper invites ICAO inter alia to amend the performance-based navigation manual document 9613 in accordance with the ICAO SARPs and refers to newly approved sensors with specific attention to GBUS. We would like to invite the committee to note that there is a PBN study group in place established by the ICAO Secretariat. The group is already considering how to include newly approved sensors in the PBN manual. It has been agreed to rewrite navigation specifications in the PBN manual more performance oriented and not exclude specific sensors unless it is essential to do so. Thus, we consider the subject being already adequately addressed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Germany. Iceland? Thank you, Chair. Uh, we support working paper 190 presented by Uganda as we consider GNSS monitoring to be of paramount importance to the well-functioning GNSS. Supporting the Secretariat's comments concerning the issue of funding, we would like to state that we look favorably to regional in initiatives such as this one by the Eastern African region. Europe is also pursuing a regional approach for GNSS monitoring, and we would like to encourage international cooperation between regions such as Africa and Europe on this subject. Thank you. Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, uh, Kenzo welcomes and supports Working Paper 283, presented by ASECNA. We fully agree and support the potential benefits that ASPAS over the African region may have. Therefore, Kenzo advises that ICAO should encourage collaboration between external service providers and state regulators, as well as between regulators, to, de to develop a mechanism to assure and approve the use of any ASPAS within a sovereign area of airspace. This would leave the aircraft implementation as clean as possible and therefore significantly incentivize adoption of the technology by airspace users. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, Japan? Yes, thank you, Chairman. So Japan supports the working paper 167 presented by ICCAIA and IETA. So in order to avoid the regional mandatory uh, equipage for the dual frequency merge constellation of GNSS, so which obviously uh, uh, brings uh, complex operations. So Japan supports uh, the re recommendations of these papers uh, with activities of the ICAO NSP to develop the CONOPS for the uh, dual frequency merge constellation of the GNSS. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Japan. Uh, Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Russian Federation supports working paper 15 support, uh, presented by the Secretary, and we hope that ICAO will 
in turn support the development of the standards for the future development of the DFMC concept and uh, SFMC. Also, the Russian Federation is against uh, ensuring that there are mandates against the specific the use of specific uh, equipment and uh, as uh, and this regards working paper 167 by IKEA and IATA regarding this specific mandate thank you mr chairman Burkina Faso merci thank you chairman With regard to Senegal's uh, presentation of uh, Working Paper 283 on behalf of the uh, SECNA member states, and in view of the benefits of uh, the SBAS program for the region, in particular remote uh, regions uh, where ground aids are hard to use. Uh, we uh, strongly support this uh, Working Paper 283 and uh, feasibility studies have been ongoing uh, since 2015 led by ASECNA and other organizations and uh, we would like to welcome the efforts uh, deployed toward uh, this uh, program, and we fully support the recommendations set out in Working Paper 283. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cameroon? Merci. Thank you, Chairman. Cameroon supports uh, Working Paper 15, presented by the Secretariat, and we would ask that uh, ICAO put in place a uh, framework to provide support to, to states uh, with regard to the use of this system in their airspace. And uh, it shouldn't just be development of guidance material. It's important to develop uh, skills and human resources. And Cameroon also supports uh, Working Paper 167 presented by IADA and IKEA. And we support the recommendations set out in that paper. But uh, we have our doubts about uh, recommendation C, asking states to refrain from uh, imposing uh, certain uh, equipment and complementary systems. We know full well that it's those complementary systems that uh, enable us to achieve the objectives in our areas of activity. So we believe that uh, this recommendation should uh, perhaps be adapted and uh, for it to be clear that there could be uh, situations where um, uh, states might refrain from imposing certain systems or not. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Ayata. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. In regarding to the issue of GIS monitoring, IATA would like to invite state and air navigation service provider to please reconfirm with the IKO requirements prior to making a decisions on the issue, uh, noting that the GIS avionics can uh, frequently perform quite different from other type of GIS receiver. Uh, regarding to the issue of the interference uh, with GIS that referred to in one of the working paper in this batch, we highly encourage uh, state who haven't done so to establish appropriate radio frequency regulations in order to protect a located GIS frequency from harmful interference in line with the ITU regulations. We also believe that the enforcement of such regulations should be done by the national frequency authorities in coordination with the federal aviation uh, authorities. Mr. Chairman, I ask regarding to the issue of the GIS augmentation system that have been discussed uh, here. GNS with a bus have and will continue to safely and efficiently satisfy operator requirements for in route and terminal area operations. The technologies have routinely shown that it safely support the approach with vertical guidance in accordance with IQ and X6 provisions and state operational approvals. 
For SBAS, as mentioned earlier, IATA does not support mandatory requirements that would require SBAS equipment or unjustified operational restriction due to lack, the lack of uh, SBAS equipage. On GBAS, IATA would like to take these opportunities to thank IQ and all members of the Navigation System Panel on the completions of its provisions related to the GBAS Category 2 and 3 efficient approach. To date, more than 100 allies operating globally have now equipped with GBAS avionics. On the main issue of dual frequency multi consideration GNLS, IATA support the Secretariat papers, uh, working paper 15, and also we note in appreciation the Russian suggestions for international regulatory support for the FMC GNLS without prohibiting any given GNLS elements, as shown in working paper 153. IATA, however, caution on changes in avionics and IQ standard that would result in fragmentations of the global navigation satellite services and does not contribute directly to the long-term goals as outlined in the DFMC CONOPS. Mr. Chairman, as detailed in the joint paper, working paper 167, your industry have collective concern on mandating, mandating specific GIS elements. We therefore would like to encourage state to take timely action to deliver the long-term goals in the DFMC CONOPS a positive environment in which they had recognized the use of all genius elements that are performing in compliance with ICOSAP is of significant importance. This will be a key foundation in facilitating the industry adoption and investment in the FMC GNLS. On the issue regarding the uh, gas and frequency spectrum as shown in working paper 150, IATA encouraged all stakeholders to follow the performance-based approach with underlies or gas provision Therefore, we do not support adding any information in the gas concept suggesting specific technical solution and regarding proposal that can affect our ITU radio regulations and incumbent IQ navigation system. Those proposals should be thoroughly reviewed by relevant IQ technical panel, especially the frequency spectrum management panel. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cote d'Ivoire supports paper 283 by ASECNA, which was presented by Senegal. And we would like to invite the conference to consider the status of implementation of this, which is very important for our region. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ifalpa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, IFALPA would like to support the conclusions and recommendations of working paper 167 presented by uh, ICCAA and IATA. Uh, in particular, IFALPA considers that precluding the use of some readily available and duly certified GNSS elements may be detrimental to flight safety in many circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, France. Merci, Monsieur le Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My con comments relate to 111, paper 150, paper 167, and 283. Working paper 111 proposes in paragraph 4.2 to include various GBAS approaches in the PBN manual. We think that this is a an, an considerable administrative burden for not much benefit. The GBAS approaches could be safely insured without this, as various programs around the world show. French, therefore, does not support the inclusion of the GBAS approaches in the PBN manual. Working Paper 150 proposes establishing a communication l link so that there can be distress uh, signals received in uh, aircrafts. In uh, several places, we see that the activation should be uh, occurring through search and rescue centers. However, uh, this uh, does not require interaction between these organizations and the aircraft in flight. And so this is up to the ATS units to do that and, if necessary, air defense. As uh, mentioned by the Secretariat, the recommendation A 
was uh, not going to be considered in the GADS. As regards recommendation B, we think it's premature given the discussion related to the questions of specifications and certifications of the uh, the distress system activation from the ground. As regards working paper 167, uh, France understands the industry's concerns that are expressed in this paper. However, we do not support the wording of recommendation C relating to the uh, obligations. Uh, recommendation E in uh, working paper 15 presented by the Secretariat should be used in its place. France supports working paper 283. This paper shows, in particular, the advantages of SBAS for air navigation in this region. As mentioned in the document, SBAS is essential and allows the deployment and uh, improvement of PBM operations. This makes it possible to improve safety in all the areas of flight, increasing the number of aerodromes that can use these procedures, and especially vertical guidance, and as relates to trajectories. And this also will improve the CO2 emissions. F France plans to contribute, along with the other members of ESECNA, to this program. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a few more uh, interventions, but we have take, I've taken more than seven minutes of the coffee break. Uh, I would like to break here, and then we would continue the discussion at the end of the coffee break. The coffee break is sponsored by Abus. And yeah. <laughs> so see you back at the end of the coffee break. Thanks. Yes.